Father, I thank you today for divine revelation, impartation. Thank you that you dwell amongst us. Thank you that you have admonished us, commanded us to declare that we shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Thank you that your kingdom come, that your will is being done daily in us as it is in heaven. Father, on this Easter Sunday, this season that we celebrate the foundation of our Christian faith, Help us, O oh God, to always live and declare the gospel in every sphere of our existence. Now, Father, give us revelation afresh. Help me to speak as you speak. And when you have done speaking for this time to us, help me to be still and take my seat. Because it's about you and you being glorified. I bless you now and I honor you. Father, just in case, forgive me. If there's any sin in my life, forgive me. Help me, O oh God, to always be sensitive to you and to bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go into word. Logos, eros, not eros, uh, zoe, rima, whatever it is for you today, let it be. My, uh, Luke, the 24th chapter, would you stand to honor God, please, as it is our tradition, a good tradition. He is the word himself, the living word. Luke, the 24th chapter, verse 1 through 12. We want to read this together. And I sometimes ask you, let's read together. And I don't hear you all. Let's read aloud. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you can't read, tell someone to read for you. Let me hear it for me while I hear. All right, but let's, let's read together. Luke, the 24th chapter, um, reading verse 1 through verse 12. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's read, please. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. These were some brave women, you and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why you won't stay dead? This ain't place for you. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you? When he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven. Judas is now dead. And to all the rest. It was Mary the one who was considered the voice, God gave her the best message. That's why you can't chaos people off. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. Now hold it. The apostles are supposed to be the leaders. But the women's them bringing the message to the leaders them because the leaders them hide anyway. Let me leave it alone. And their words seem to them as 
idle tales. And they believed them not. Look at Peter, big bad Peter. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher. Stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. God's word is blessed. We declare, amen, amen. I speak a life-flowing word into the atmosphere, into your spirit today as you receive that will change you and I for the better. In Jesus' name, amen. The foundation of our Christian faith and the hope of our existence and for the future is based on the reality that Jesus is alive and his tomb is empty. From the topic, the power of the empty tomb. The power of the empty tomb. In all other religions, followers are still visiting their tombs. Bringing flowers and bringing gifts to appease their God. When I typed this, these notes, I, would type, I typed their God in small g. Trying to appease a God that cannot hear. God that cannot see. A God that cannot do for them what needs to be done. I refuse to get myself involved in legalism or in discussion. Uh, missing the main point. This is not about what day to worship. This is not about what day he arose. This is not about some legalism. That's why the devil has the church many times distracted. The fact is that Jesus arose again from the day or rose from the dead, and the tomb uh, is empty. It could have been Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The, f the, the day doesn't really matter. What matters is the tomb is empty. Hallelujah. And because the tomb is empty, we can rejoice today with a hope that because the tomb is empty, that we have life, and we have life more abundantly. Look at what it says here on that first early Easter Sunday morning. Jesus, the Son of God, rose. And this was interesting God gave me. He said, let's understand this because there's some folks going to miss it. The natural sun had not really risen as yet. God's going somewhere. It said it was early when it began to dawn. You all ever seen the sun burst forth just when the darkness is there and the sun burst forth? God said, no, no, let me, let me show you the implication here. He says, the natural sun wasn't even up in the sky yet, but the spiritual sun was born to remind us that because the tomb is empty, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. When you recognize the power of the tomb, you recognize that you can live a victorious life every day of your life. Because with the Bible, there's a song that says, with Jesus in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. I know I'm going way back, but at the end of the day, the Bible says, okay, let's go Bible. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. My foundational belief is because the tomb is empty, I can live in a world that's crazy and still live a victorious life amen you gotta understand that deity i'm laying a foundation here the god of glory had fulfilled his purpose on the earth and it goes a bit further grace had been completed and now creation grown because it could not as i studied this text i understood a little bit just a little bit in my mega mind i said god creation could not contain the god of glory when he said before he went down he says no man takes my life he says i lay it down and i raise it 
up again. I would even try to imagine when the earthquake began to happen, when things began to shake, when Jesus now turned from man back into deity, the whole creation began to groan because the tomb was empty. It could not contain the Savior of glory. God help me here. Deity, Lord. God. God burst forth and the grave could not even hold him down. God broke, for, uh, broke forth, rather. It wasn't even about the grave. He was saying to himself, as I started this text as the party, I was wondering where Jesus went. And the Bible says he went down into the earth. And on the third day, Jesus told himself, I could imagine for a moment, he told himself, okay, it's time for me to come up because I've got to go back to the Father in heaven. The tomb is empty. Why? Because when the God of glory exhibited his power, he said, I'm going to rise again so that every person that had death in their life when you come to the place of your of your existence where things seem to be dead that you can call on the God of glory and he will cause that which is dead to live again because Jesus is alive amen What's dead in your life that God has spoken? God help me here. What's dead in your life that God has spoken that it shall live but the devil has caused you to believe that it's dead but I've come by to prophesy to you today that because he lives you shall live also. Amen. The tomb is empty. You got to understand the power of an empty tomb because it signifies it signifies that God has fulfilled the purpose of why he came so that he can die that we might live that's why I say to you stop talking death over your life God came that we might live he died that we might live he took on sin that we might live God took on everything that is bad so that we can have that which is good God took on our sickness so that we can be healed God took it on that's why the tomb is empty Oh, God, help me here. The tomb is empty. I'm not saying get out here. The tomb is empty. The Bible says this here. When we understand Matthew 20 and 2, and behold, there was a great earthquake. It didn't just say an earthquake. We say 10 on the Richter scale. Oh, have a Richter was the guy who invented the scale. We say 10 on the Richter scale. But the Bible says there was not only an earthquake, there was a great earthquake. I like God. God went down softly. But when God came up, he came up with all authority and power. He declared all power is given unto me. You want to understand Do you, can you live a powerful life if you got God in your life. You can live with all power in your life because God is on your side. Amen. Matthew 28 and 2. Behold there was a great earthquake and, and look here the earthquake wasn't to get Jesus out. Let me, let me just mess that up right there. The earthquake wasn't to get Jesus out. All power was already given to him. The earthquake was just to show that he was God. Just to show you my... The Bible says the soldiers were unfra- These centurion trained soldiers. The soldiers were afraid. When you can imagine you're somewhere and you're thinking you're all bad and a bag of chips and all of a sudden the earth begins to rumble and tumble and you don't know exactly what's going on. Fear will grip your life. I believe with all sincerity that when my God of glory was coming out of the tomb, there was nothing in this natural world that that could contain the God of glory. And so the earth had to shake and rumble. I declare in your life today. I don't care what's going on. When the spirit of God moves in your life. Everything that's terrible. Has got to shake and rumble. Because the tomb is empty. The thing about it is this. Do you want things in your life? to be shaken to the point that God can be glorified. Do you want things in your life or are you just concerned to live in a dead? I know my folks have been dead. I, I, nothing against you all. I know but I, I have a hard time. I have not even gone back to the grave because I have a hard time sometimes you all every year commemorating going back and putting some flowers on the grave. I respect that. I understand that but I figured one day God there's some bones down there. They might have been disintegrated by 
right now. I know it's a place of memorial, but I don't want to stay in the dead place. I want to continue living because if they were alive, they would say, Lester, you better live on. And so you got to understand, don't commemorate the dead spot. You got to live life and tell yourself, no matter what's going on, because Jesus is alive, you got to speak life into your situation. I don't care how dead it is. You've got to learn to use the power of the tongue. If you decree a thing, it shall be established. Good God. And the light shall light your pathway. you got to learn to open your mouth. The devil wants you to be deceived and keep your mouth shut. But you've got to open your mouth. That's why the song, why the pen, the song, because he lives. I get to one point maybe I can face tomorrow I can face not just face tomorrow I can face the Bible says when David came toward Goliath he understood it was danger there but because God was on his side he ran toward Goliath with all the strength that God has given to you some of you have been running from the enemy this ain't no time for you to be running from the devil that devil has been slapping you up beating you up punching you up and all you you're saying is I got a bruise from the devil but you got to go and declare the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent taketh by force you got to declare the word of God that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper in every tongue that rises against me I shall condemn you've got to learn to speak word from your mouth that's why I don't play with demonic forces I may not have understood back then fully as I came into ministry, but now I understand a little bit further. If there is no understanding with your maturity, then you got to check yourself. I don't play with religious spirits. I don't play with religious bigots. I don't play with folks who are just concerned about arguing legalism and this, I ain't got time for that. All I know that the Bible says about the, 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 the young man, when the Pharisees asked him, say, you're the parent, uh, the parent said, uh, uh, Where's your, is your boy healed because of Jesus? And the parent says, he's old enough, ask him. And the man said, I just know this one thing. I don't know what you're talking about, but I was once blind, but now I see. I ain't got to argue all this stuff with folks because the tomb is empty I gotta tell myself I was once condemned but now I'm free I was once blind but now I see I was once unforgiven but now I'm forgiven whatever you want to put in there I didn't get time to be arguing with the stuff all I know because the tomb is empty and Jesus says because I live you shall live also we got to understand the reality of this word that we say, we declare. We, we got to understand it's time, word of truth, that word of truth got to live a victorious life in every area. Word of truth and those who would listen, but let me talk to word of truth here. You can go on the traditions of life. You got to say, God, I need fresh oil. One of the worst things in life sometimes to have in Charlotte is food or milk that's stale. You ever, you ever drank stale milk and you had to spew it out of your mouth because it was stale? Because you kept it there. And you realize, like my, my wife used to tell me, Lester, when the date shows up, that means throw it away. I said, no, that didn't mean throw it away. Until I discovered one day that when you throw it away, and you use after the date that there is results because you drank something that was stale. There's a reason why they have expiration dates on certain things. I've come by to prophesy to you that today is your expiration date. For all the stuff that the enemy has tried to bring against you, you've got to open your mouth and declare today is the expiration date. I'm going to walk in the newness and the freshness that God has for me and no devil is going to stop me from enjoying the blessings of God. Here's the litmus test. If whatever you're going through or saying is not glorifying God, then it's not of God. 
And that's why people say, why do you stand here and, and, and you condemn? I don't condemn people. Ain't no way God's going to send a tsunami to Nassau, Bahamas and kill everybody right here. I don't know about you all. But I know Jesus. Ain't no way God's going to cause some big hurricane to come and everything in Nassau is going to be destroyed. Where are you going to live? Ain't no way God, God, even in Sodom and Gomorrah, God spared some folks. And you, you, this is a season where you got to combat ignorance and false prophetic words like never before because too many people's lives are being destroyed because of foolishness, y'all. I was studying this text. Jesus says, look at my teaching." Nowhere in the Bible do you ever see Jesus speaking negativity about people. Even with the Pharisees, even though he called them generation of vipers. But Jesus never, he said that because that's who they were. Jesus wasn't prophesying. Oh, look at what he said to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you know, John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, so have I gathered you and I mourn for you. How many people's lives, God, where you taking me here, are being destroyed because some false prophet declared a word that they feel? Sometimes God would have me say something, I don't feel it. And he said to me, speak it. I'm not just here to prophesy just to prophesy. You got to be careful when you're prophesying. Because if your prophecy is not ultimately going to bring life and change, then it's false. I said it, it's false. And you are, whoever you are, a false prophet. The church has got to confront those who say they are the church, but are not. The word is always speaking life. Look throughout the word. God gave me, he says, Lester, I'm always speaking life. Even in the midst of death. The tomb is empty. The power of the empty tomb. God gives me the ability to confront falsehood. One older lady came to me, told me she was some prophetic lady. And then told me, God, say, I see you backslide. I said, demon, shut up. God told you that he see me backsliding? And then God would always expose the devil. Because when I said that, then she started arguing. And I just went click. Because I know then that you ain't of God. You tell it. After all I've been through, I can't go back <laughs> to the way things used. You're going to tell me, God say to tell me. That's why I don't. People, how many people have spoken and called me and said, Bishop, I got a prophetic word for the church. Shut up. I give you shepherds after my own heart to teach you in wisdom and knowledge. If God's got a word for this church, then obviously he's going to tell me, eh? And got to be confirmation. How you would tell? I was, I, you know, Sister Charlotte, I, I tried to stay safe, but I almost let go. I got to hold on here. Because what I was about to tell her. I, re I, re I remember she is older than me because Vanessa, what I was about to tell her and then repent. And God said, no, you might not have an opportunity. Don't let the devil sway you. No, that thought is one thing because a lot of us think about some things. But see, when you hunger, when your thought lingers, the thought ain't the wrong thing. But when you linger on that thought and act on because the more you linger, See, I tell folks all the time, the power of the empty. God gives you the power to live right. We have eyes. You could see some things, but you ain't got to dwell there. You better sing the song. Holy Spirit, 
Thou art welcome. Dwell in me right now. The power of the empty tomb gives us the ability to live a word-based life. Everything I do is because of word. I've dealt with some things in my life. Many years ago, my parents died. My mama died. We were getting the grave site. I might have told you this. We were getting the grave site there, plot. My father I'm on the Lakeview. Young lady with a baby in the graveyard say she's coming to prophesy. <laughs> and my sister looked at me and I said, you got to be crazy. You in the place among dead. And she that mumba, 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 mumba. Anybody can speak it on la, 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 la. You go say la, la, la for a little while. But, but she, look at the devil. She was, she had a, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, God touch this young child. She had a baby in the graveyard. And when, when she left, the owner said, yeah, she always, yeah, she kind of. But call in the name of Jesus. And some people would say, oh, that's a word in the graveyard. When Jesus spoke in the graveyard by Lazarus, life had to come. You can't stay in death where life is. There's three instances where resurrection happened before Jesus. When God raised the widow's son that was on the pier bearer from the, uh, uh, the widow of Nain, and he raised her, her son, the people were hollering and crying. Jesus said, slow down, y'all, slow your roll, slow your roll. He touched the bear and said, look, you get the, 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 where the coffin is. He said, stand up, rise up. That's one. The second one, he said, Jairus, these people need to go because they only making noise right here. He said, Tabitha was a kuma, is a Latin. He says, daughter, Arise. The third time, God solidified it. Four days. Mary said, Martha said, Lord, if you had been here. Woman, you don't know who in your presence. If you had been here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. <laughs> he said, don't you know? I'm the resurrection and the life. Let that sink in. You want, but your dead situation, don't you know that God is the resurrection and the life? And that your brother shall rise again? Yeah, I know God is going to rise again, but in that day, Jesus said, hold it a minute. Take me to the grave. Take, take me with it. Take me with it. <laughs> and people were kind of trying to run to try to find out what Jesus is going to do. See, Jesus don't have time to waste with foolishness, you know. When Jesus understands his purpose and we ought to understand our purpose, we cannot be distracted by those who are crying because they paid to be crying or those who are the naysayers. We've got to speak the word. Child of God, don't be distracted by the enemy. Stay focused. Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says he spoke with a loud voice, eh? I guess so that those naysayers could hear too. Sometimes you got to play crazy when you speak in life and speak with a loud voice. <laughs> right? Lazarus! Come forth. Why was he doing that, Bishop? He was still bound. Even a bound man knew that even though some things may be holding him right now, Jesus says, now the rest of y'all who still don't believe, lose him. Let him go. You got to understand, the power of the empty tomb declares to us there is nothing impossible with God. That's why we can't live a blasé life. That's why we got to enjoy all that God has given to us. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus gave up the ghost with an earthquake. He arose with an earthquake to give humanity another glimpse of his power.
Imagine people who have got power. I was telling my wife the other day, if, if, if some evil men in the world, and I reminded her, I said, but God is still in control. I said, if there's ever some evil men in the world now, that's Putin, that's Kim Jong-un. Now, I know y'all got some other names. But them two right there, and I, I felt sorry. In fact, I, I, believe, I, I started to feel sorry for the terrorists, but I wasn't sorry no more. They rolled one into the court system unconscious in the wheelchair. They beat those guys so profoundly who shut up the theater in Moscow. I mean, they, and they weren't afraid to show their faces. I was reading an article. They say Putin, Putin doesn't travel with airplanes hardly. He travels in an Air, an armored train because he's very paranoia. I say, you better be. You know why? Because ain't no one outside is going to kill you. It's always an inside job. Kim Jong-un in North Korea would rather starve his people to death while he's eating caviar and went to boarding school in Switzerland. Lives a lot of times underground. But guess what? There is a God. That's why you can't be afraid of evil. There is a God who declares, don't fear him who could destroy just your body, but fear him who could destroy both body and soul in hell. God, God just got hell for them if they don't repent. And all that will live ungodly and a wicked life, God got hell for them too. Jesus gave up the ghost with an earthquake. Came back with an earthquake to give us a glimpse of, you know, the God you and I serve. The evidence is clear. There's no doubt. You know when you know something, just people come see. The evidence is clear. The stone has been rolled away to prove that the tomb is empty. Be careful of people who are always hide and stuff. Because they don't want you to see it. They saying it, you know, you, nothing against my Muslim brothers, but when they go to Mecca or Medina and they get this big stone ready, they say, yeah, it's in this, it's, you know, this big thing. They go worship the shrine. They say, it's in there. What's in there? So I'm going to always say there's some secret behind that, but you can't see it. Just worship it. No, the tomb that I go to is empty. Prove that God is real. The soldiers confirmed it. And a lie by the religious leaders and a bribe of a large sum of money could not deny it. The soldiers came running into the city after they heard the, they felt the earthquake and they were trembling and they went first of all to religious leaders, not even to Pilate and Herod. Revelation. Be careful when the world runs, first of all, to religious leaders who they know crooked. They didn't go to Pilate or Herod. They were killed. All of them were in the same bike. And the religious leaders, those I didn't say Christians, the religious leaders had enough influence over the most trained military men at the time. Because Satan will always come at your soft spot. And he knows that a whole lot of people love M-O-N-E-Y. They couldn't deny it. The religious leader says, we're going to pay you a large sum of money. And tell them that 11 little miggly fellas came and stole the body of a Messiah that was behind a stone with the Roman signet on it and soldiers guarding it 24-7. Look at God. He could have gotten up with the stone still there. But it builds our faith. To remind us 
that the tomb is empty. The power of the tomb tells us that no matter how terrible the situation, we still have hope because Jesus lives. I've been poor and I've had some things in life. And I love much better having some things in life than being poor. I love much better having a choice of food, Sister Margie, than having to say, that's what you're going to eat and that's what's going to fill your belly for the day. I don't despise where I've come from because they've been poorer than me. I don't despise drinking pear leaf tea and lemon leaf tea. There's a restaurant that I go to and fish fry. I ain't not going to call the name of Drifters, but they serve you some lemonade and what they call the champions. Uh, they put the plastic cup in. Uh, uh, the ch Ricardo, you owe me some money for this. Anyway, uh, they put the champion cup in the, the, the plastic lemonade cup in a can that's colored that says champion pigeon peas. Y'all don't know what it is. Best taste of lemonade around. I can still go back to the well and put the sisal rope on the paint can and pour it down the well. Doesn't mean I forget. I can still bathe in cold water if it comes to it. Some people are like, ooh, Mama Williams is like, ooh, Jesus. I, I can still go to the outside kitchen and fan the fire while the smoke is coming to my eyes because I know the potato bread is on the three-pronged black stove and it's got to be done in that banana leaf. And so when I turn the banana leaf over, it's worth it because once I turn that banana leaf over and that potato bread comes out and I cut the first slice, I'm like, oh God, there's heaven. I'm trying to show you here that even in your worst situation, there's still hope. That's why the tomb is empty. That's why there's power in the tomb. Because even in our worst situation, we have hope. Because Jesus lives. The power of the empty tomb tells us that no matter what sin we have committed, when we come to Jesus in humility and sincerity, our sins are forgiven. The young lady told me, Miss Dean, she said, Bishop, you know, I lived some sinful life back in the day. I said, look here, daughter. I said, look here, I, every day I ask God forgiveness. I don't, don't worry about your condemnation in the past. Understand, live in the present. Here's what the Bible says in 1 John 8 and 10. It says this, in, uh, uh, 1 John 1, 8 and 10. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But here's the verse that also gets me. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. So don't mind these holy rollers looking all religious. The power of the empty tomb gives us the, the ability to bypass them. Because we know they sinned last night. In fact, they like the woman at the well. The man they live in with ain't theirs. Or the woman they live in. And we invent words. There's nowhere in the Bible, the Bible talks about common law wife or common law husband. They call them concubines. People are fussing over estates. Why? You know how many people in my lifetime, I had a cousin, I thought she was married all this time. Until she died. And then they said, Lester, you don't reckon no day they, they ain't married? I said, after all, listen in my notes, listen in my notes, y'all. How could you become so comfortable after 20, 30 years? And you ain't let that fella or whoever say, I do, because there's some legal ramifications that's going to come when they close their eyes. And think about you don't have five, six children and still ain't say, I do. Learn me something. Learn me like they say. Don't even teach me. Learn me. 
But you got to understand, the power of the empty tomb tells me that I'm forgiven. Why? Because Jesus says that if we make, if we have not sinned, if we say we have not sinned, we make who? God a liar. And then it says, and his word is not in us. That's 1 John 1, 8 and 10. Let me give two more and get out of here. The power of the empty tomb tells us that no matter what sickness may wreck our bodies, we have access to the healing touch of God. Let me give you scripture, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I, 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 maybe I'm an anomaly. I, I'm like, I like living an anomaly. But I don't understand Christians who don't believe that God's a healer. I'm like, why are you serving God if God can't heal you? I know God's healed me many times. And you don't believe the God? That's like you going in an airplane and don't believe the pilot can fly this airplane. Well, duh, if the plane crash, it's on you. You don't believe that God is the healer? He's proven it over and over in his word. The power of the empty tomb tells us that we, I like this one, that we are complete in Christ. We must not be swayed. By the philosophy of men. Look at what it says in Colossians 2, 8 and 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the elements of the world and not after Christ. For in him, that's Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Which is the head, look at this, that's a whole meat just by itself, of all principality and power. I'm not proud, I just know who I am. I'm complete in Christ. So what you say about me don't move me. Because I told one, I said, you paying my mortgage? You haven't been giving breath to breathe? You haven't, Jen, shut up, don't tell me. That may sound grass, but you got to deal with some people accordingly. You, you, you give me any money, you, you help me to get some food? See, some things you need to shut down right away. Shut it, shut, shut it down. Because you ain't got time to play with the devil. God says we are complete. That's, if nothing else in this message, for those of you that are feeling inferior, who are feeling as though you're not, you're not worthy, I've come by to tell you on the unction of the Holy Ghost, you are complete in God. Nothing, what, what Goshen is? What's, what's my friends over there? What's their, what's their, what's their, what's their, their, their quote over there by transformation? Living in the land of Goshen, nothing lacking what? And nothing what? Nothing lacking and nothing broken. Look here. You could wear your hair the way it is. You know, you don't need weave. But if you want to put on some weave, that's all right. But you look... You can live just the way you are as God has prospered you. If you want to be chubby, that's on you. Not chubby, but you want to be healthy, fluffy, that's on you. If you want to be slim, that's on you. Just live the way, just live. You are complete in Christ. Fearfully, thank you, darling. You understand who you are. You understand what the empty tomb means for you. The empty tomb gives you a boldness to know that you are a child of God. Stop feeling as though you are inferior. It is the plan of the devil himself. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You are complete. Nothing lacking in you. In God, you and I are complete. The power of of an empty tomb tells us that Jesus is coming again. Not only is he coming again, he's coming for his church and we will live with him forever. But while we wait, 
He has given us power to live and be an example of his kingdom on the earth. I'm doing some things right now. I don't have no money in some instances, but I don't know. I, I don't have no money, but things are being done. Things have been accomplished in my life. People say, I was traveling that day. I was traveling the other day, Dick Spurgeon, and they ain't pay a dime. They just sent me, here's your ticket, come to the airport. Here's your hotel, come live. <laughs> and we want to live in cheap. <laughs> you send me your wine, but how, oh, the power, go out of one now, I'm going to make it stop. Be anxious for nothing. See, when you put the work in, there's a reward process. Now, don't envy someone if they are a little bit ahead of you. That's their purpose to walk that way. But you like where you are. I don't envy anybody. Because I don't know what they took to get where they at. God's coming again. That's the whole reason why I live. God is coming again. And I'm going to get caught up on some foolishness. The empty tomb tells me I've got to prepare myself. How do I know that? Acts 1, 8, 11. But ye shall receive power. First of all, here's why you live. That's the Bible talks about. It talks about exousia and talks about dynamite power. Exousia is authoritative power. Dunamis is explosive power. You got both of them as a child of God. The Bible says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, this is Jesus talking now, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked up steadfastly toward heaven as he went. Can you imagine? This wasn't no hologram and this wasn't no AI. This was reality right here. I don't care what hologram they play and what a, a, a robot can never be human. Never. Because someone made that robot and somewhere along the line that robot is going to break down. Ask the assembly line people when things back up. I know we like things, and I know they say the world, the world, the world is transforming. I, I believe in the times, but buddy, when I go away, I need some cash in my pocket too. <laughs> I need some moolah. The young people, Bishop, where is the cheddar? Where the cheese? Where the money? <laughs> I know you all like swiping it. I had to ask the other day. I said, Miss, you're not tapping my card. How I know that you ain't stealing something? I said, Let me put my code in. I know you like technology, but I like technology too. But it still give me some cash. Because <laughs> somewhere along the road, some people don't take. The woman said to me, We don't take card here. Do you have cash? I know you're all technology people. I understand. I ain't going in no driverless car. Let me drive. Because it's proven that a lot of them already crash. I, I know you're like battery operator. That's all well and good. But it's also proven that when they get in some heavy water, they stall out. And guess what? Ain't no electric. If I got to drive 6,000 miles, there ain't some places where electrical pump and things are. So it means I, gotta, I can't even go off course. At least with gas, I can go and explore. Or hybrid. That's right. I ain't against your technology, but buddy, give me some cash. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me here. When Jesus arose from the dead, there wasn't no AI there. When he went up into heaven, the Bible said they saw him going up. So Jesus didn't go up fast either. He said, y'all watch me. <laughs> like one of my guys said to me, he said, Bishop, don't watch nothing. I said, yeah, I got to watch it. The Bible said they look steadfastly into heaven. 
Jesus went, and I can imagine the music was playing probably. No, ain't no music was playing. It was just Jesus. As he arose, they were like, he's really gone. He, he said he's going to leave us, but he's really gone. And then everything came flooding back. They said, man, he really is the son of God. That's why the church was revolutionized. And look at what it is. I like Jesus. Jesus, also, Jesus always has a comeback. Look at this here. Samaria, he says, I'm the animal's part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while he be, they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward the heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Jesus said, let me leave somebody just to let them know. <laughs> you imagine Jesus going up and you, the minute I see people, and even today, the minute I see people in all white, I'm like, hold on, wait a minute here. Be careful how you entertain strangers, lest you entertain angels unawares. Right? Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you and into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You can imagine when Jesus comes back to this earth. And every eye shall behold him. See, the first resurrection is coming quick. Those of us who are ready, he's going to come back and, and we're going to go with him. And people going to wonder, they're going to start acting crazy. They're going to wonder, what happened to all them clothes? Where are the people going? But there's a second time he's coming back. And the Bible said he has a robe dipped in blood. He has a name written on his thigh that no man can name. The Bible said he's coming back. I mean, I go, I'm going to be in the pack. I don't know what y'all. I'm trying to preach to y'all to be in the pack. But I'm going to be in the pack. And the Bible says this. He's going to call the birds in the field. Of the field, he's going to call the vultures. He's going to say, come eat the blood, the body of kings and princes and great. Great man. And when he comes back, he ain't coming back quiet. He's coming back with all authority and power. Oh, God, help me there. The conquering lion, Rabasata, of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back with healing in his wings. He's coming back to prove to those that doubt it. And every knee shall bow. Behold, God has given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess of things in heaven and earth and under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So don't get it twisted about arguments. My uncle would say, I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. And then I add my peace. It is enough that Jesus rose and that he rose for me. He's coming. This is the ultimate power of the empty tomb. He's coming. All the gold in Westminster and Buckingham Palace cannot compare to what God has. In fact, the, let me show you what God does. God said, I'm going to make the streets of gold. God said, you're looking for oysters to have pearls? He said, look here, I got 12 found I got gates. Imagine a six foot eight by three foot door. That's a pearl. And you know all us can't fit through that door. Hey? God said, I got gates made of pearl. I got 12 foundations to the city and they're made. You can imagine a hole in Nassau just made up a ruby or diamond or emerald. Some of y'all be on the side trying to chip piece off. God said 12. See, you don't understand. You're trying to chip it off. But God says, no, just enjoy it. 12 foundation. Every foundation. I got to see if only the stone. Just the found that means the foundation made of this stuff and the streets paved of gold. What you think heaven is gonna be like, y'all? Don't get caught up. The empty tomb gives us the power to have hope that he will come again. And so we ought to celebrate. This stage of my life at 61 years of age, I refuse to live an unhappy life. 
Every day of my life, I'm going to be joyful. And folks around me who don't want to be joyful, I'm going to say roll out. Because if you can't catch, be contagious with some of this joy, then you need to roll out. I don't need to hear your sad story. I don't need to know. And Milo Butler, he was the governor general of the Bahamas back in the day. And they say his, his favorite song was Sad Eyes. Please don't. I ain't got time for Sad Eyes. Please don't make me cry. I got the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to holler. I'm going to hoop. I'm going to dance. I'm going to run. Why? Because I know there is a blessed hope that I have that because the tomb is empty when Jesus comes back again and I stand before him and hear him say well done and all of this will be worth it all someone said in the old school heaven will surely be worth it all I don't know about you I've had some ridicules in life I've had some abuse I've had some things in life that's caused me to want to hold my head and holler not only hold my head hold my back hold my side, hold my waist I've had some people that disappoint me, betrayed me and deny me, but I know this one thing, the God that rose up from the empty tomb, when he comes again for me, he's going to declare enter into the rest that I have for you, the reason why I have this power to declare it, is because the tomb is empty now to cause you and I to worship to cause you and I to praise so here's another shift word of truth this will be a place where life is spoken life is lived this will be a place where God is even more so glorified this will be a place that when dead things come in they will have to change and have life. I asked God the question in my study. I said, God, how come some people come in and lead the same way? And here's what God spoke into my spirit even early this morning. He said, Lester, it's not me, it's them. Because I'm God. You don't have to come in and leave. Buddy, I like food. I tell you all the time. I just keep my weight right, right? But when I go to a buffet, don't come to me telling me, but I need to eat no salad. When I go to a buffet, don't come to me watching no diet. When I go to a buffet, okay, let me come behind me. A buffet? When I go to all you can eat, the word says all. And they, some places I've gone, they have all underlined. All. Don't come to me telling, but you on a fast right now. No, this is a buffet. And I am going to eat. And I might start when I used to go to the place across the street. I started with the cookies because they were so good. I need the cookies first, the big round. Uh, cho- oh, Lord, help me. We're going to have some of that today? Okay. Uh, yeah. And I start with the cookies first, then go back to the food. And then I got to end up back with some cookies and put a little ice cream on the top. And people say, You're going to eat all of that? I'm tired of you telling me you're going to eat all of that. Just let me eat for a moment and enjoy it just for a moment. Can I please just eat in peace one time? I ain't calling my wife's name. I ain't calling the name. <laughs> Only one time. Just, just let me go somewhere where I can just eat. And I don't want to go taking spurs and I'm closing the power of them to them because it gives you laughter also. I don't want to go with, with a belt pants. I want to go in one of them sweatsuit pants. I'm going to go one of them sweatsuit pants where they, you know, where they allow it to stretch just a little. Just, just, let me, just let me eat in peace just a little bit, y'all. There's some days I couldn't even spell caviar. I had it one time. I don't like it because it tastes just... It just t- Take me back to the group of them. I, I know you like the cat. The bishop, the bishop, the bishop it started. You know, some of these stuff started at least two trillion dollars a can. And I said, that's all right. You can eat that. Just take me back to what I know. He says, Bishop, when some of these caviar run up to 10000 I said, $10,000? You could eat that. Just give me. Uh-huh. The power of the empty tomb gives us the ability to live an abundant life. How are you living your life today? Because of the empty tomb. I have come that you might have life. And have it. More abundantly. That's what this empty tomb is all about. Power. Power to live. What's living for you? Right now at this stage of life. Elder Sister Patty. 
living for me? Just take me down the mangrove key right there. By the fish hole down Little Harbor. And let me put on some crocs or whatever. And let me just sit by the, by the sea. Let me smell some sea breeze. Now living for you might be different. Living for me might be just, just take me down to Lisbon Creek. Let me walk the, let me walk the, the sea and just smell the fresh air. What's living for you? It might be different for you. But the empty tomb gives me the ability to live. That's why we celebrate Easter. They say about no Easter eggs. In fact, look here. You know, but look here. They say about no Easter eggs and no hunting. That's not Easter. That's some man-made fallacy to try to impress something different than Easter. Easter is about the risen Savior, the Creator of the universe. Give Him praise in the house. Hallelujah! The power. The empty tomb. On this resurrection Sunday, as you've come, whatever is dead in your life, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then your life is dead because you're spiritually dead. But this is your opportunity to have a life abundantly. And all you've got to do is believe, receive, confess with your mouth. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is your moment. This is your time. 84,600 seconds. This is a now second. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are unsaved. I pray for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior. Even in this now moment, for your word declares now is the day of salvation. Let them make a now decision to follow you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Father, because we know that not only did you rise from the dead, but that you're coming back for us. Those who are ready to go with you. So we bless you now for salvation in this house and wherever they would watch. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen.